our next keynote speaker uh, works at uh, MathSpace and also works on CoEO. That co and he is also the creator of the popular CMS framework based on Django, which is Mezzanine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephen McDonald. Hello. Hi. Um, so my name is Steve McDonald. I uh, come from Sydney, Australia, and today I'm going to talk about uh, a project called Mezzanine, which is a content management system built for Python and Django. Um, just first up, I'd like to thank the organisers. I've, I've never been to a, any kind of PyCon before, let alone actually speak at one. So uh, thanks a lot. It's a, it's a real privilege to be here. Um, so, yeah, just a bit of uh, background, um, a content management system, if you're not aware of what that is, it's, it's basically like a, a system for building dynamic websites that um, uh, the manager of the website can log into a, an administrative area and update the content on the website and things like that. Um, w WordPress is a really sort of... Uh, popular example of, uh, of a content management system. And a lot of people compare Mezzanine to WordPress. They say it's the WordPress of the, of the Python space. Um, if you don't know what Django is, it's like one of the most popular um, web development frameworks for Python. Um, if you don't know what Python is, get out. You, you shouldn't be here. Um, so yeah, the talk will basically, I'll, I'll go through a few parts. First up, I'll just talk about um, the background leading up to why we would build Mezzanine, um, some of the distinguishing characteristics of Mezzanine, um, and uh, how it's actually implemented in, in, in Django terms, and then we'll look at some of the features it gives you and the, the ec ecosystem that's around it. So um, first up, uh, just a bit about myself. I've been a, a developer since um, the late 90s when the internet really took off. Um, I've been in the you know, web development space, system administration, DevOps, everything around that. Um, that's my only real sort of uh, qualification being here is that I've been doing this stuff for a really long time. Um, I've worked with a lot of uh, programming languages, databases, different platforms and things like that. And in the last eight years or so, I've, I've really focused on, on Python and Django. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a really fa fantastic way to do web, web development. Um, uh, these days, I work at a couple of startups. Um, first one's called MathSpace.co, and we provide this really sophisticated application to um, high schools that um, allows teachers to uh, basically teach math students at the high school level. Um, and it really goes beyond uh, the competitors in this space that might provide sort of simple um, multiple choice type questions. Yes yes, no, right, wrong. Um, you know, we, we have like a mathematical parsing engine that can give uh, students really fine-grained feedback. We use machine learning techniques to sort of uh, guide them through a, a dependency graph of, of different mathematical topics and, and, and things like that. Um, my other startup I'm working on, this is my, my pride and joy, it's uh, Kuio. Um, it's a really slick RSS reader that um, if you're a big user of Google Reader and they shut down, a lot of new uh, RSS readers cropped up and, 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 and this is one of them. And my, uh, my third job is a, another full-time job. It's uh, developing mezzanine and maintaining 
all the contributions and the community around that and, and things like that. And that's just a, a brief sort of visual overview of what Mezzanine is. You, you have this uh, administrative interface for managing all the content and different aspects of a website. And what you can see on the right there is the default Mezzanine website that you get out of the box just saying welcome and here are some uh, links that will point you in the right direction. Um, so all of these projects that I'm working on, uh, I've put the little Python logos here. This is all Python and Django based, my, the startups, the open source stuff, it's all Python and Django. It's a great space to be working in for web development with Python. Uh, there's, there's nothing really that can compare to it at the moment, I think. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the, the background leading up to building Mezzanine and, and why would I go and build another CMS, like there's WordPress, there's, there's a gazillion CMSs in the PHP space, there's, there's some these days in the Django space, um, and you know, you know, they're really a dime a dozen. If I was to sit down today, I probably wouldn't build another CMS. Um, so for me, to, for, for me to justify doing that, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my, my CMS story. Um, so this is going back a few years, uh, 2002, I, uh, I started working at this place called a, a digital agency, which is a really fancy name for a, a web development shop that um, focuses on uh, really high name consumer, consumer brands, so B to C type websites, um, very content heavy websites, um, e-commerce, but their, their real core capabilities were marketing and, and, and branding, right? So um, really strong visual design in, in all the web work they were doing. And <clears throat> so I started there as a developer and um, I was working on the back end of all, all these sites, CMS sites, e-commerce sites. Um, now, they're, they're, while they're, their marketing and their, their branding skills were like top notch, um, their, their sort of technical skills were, were really simplistic and a little bit crude. Um, so I started working on CMS projects there and each of the, the, the approach for doing each of these CMS sites was basically um, take a whole bunch of uh, ASP files from the previous website and for each section in the CMS copy and paste um, a, a, a listing script and an edit script and an add script and a delete script with, with SQL queries directly embedded in those and copy and paste those and, and find and replace all the table names and change the form fields manually. And it had this, uh, it had this very simplistic charm uh, to it, right? Like web development these days, we have to go through so many layers of MVC frameworks and deployment and things like that. And this was really simple, but um, it was kind of boring and it was, uh, it was quite laborious as well. And so I, I worked with that for a couple of months and sort of said, uh, you know, we, could, we can do better than this. We can sort of um, abstract out some of the variable aspects of this and really productize it. And so I took the, took the initiative at that, at that time to start doing that and the company was really on board with that. And so I, I went for a few years sort of uh, doing lots of different uh, broad range of uh, CMS sites, e-commerce sites, and really developed a, a, an appreciation for the wide range of uh, content requirements that can come along with all sorts of different types of sites. And the way to manage all the, this big spectrum of different types of contents in a really holistic way in a single system that we can provide as the CMS to these really high, like number one brands in my country, Australia, that are paying an inordinate amount of money for these CMS projects. Um, and, and so I, I developed that and that worked really well for a while. Um, and then along came Django and I'm the kind of guy, right? I mean. I mostly work on Python these days, but I don't call myself a Python developer, right? I, I love looking at different programming languages, different uh, databases, operating systems, things like that, right? I'm always looking to broaden my horizons and, and perspectives and, and work out different and better ways for building these online systems. So I think it was about 2005, I started looking at um, Python and just fell in love with it. it. It just spoke to me in terms of elegance and batteries included and things like that. And it was really great. And at the same time, Django was just coming out. It was before Django 1.0. And so it was early days in the Django space, which is a big key here to why we, we built Mezzanine. And um, it really appealed to 
us in terms, I don't know if you're familiar with Django or not, but one of the, the real selling points of Django is it provides you this admin interface that you can really quickly get up and running. You, you develop your, your database models and in, in a very minimal amount of code, you can have this backend um, administrative interface for your website that the managers can log into and, and it's, it's really sort of a CRUD interface, listing records add, edit, delete, that kind of thing. And, and the Django admin, um, it really mirrored what I'd been doing uh, in these private CMS projects um, where I learnt how to just create a single, set, a, a single system that does CRUD apps and configure it for a whole bunch of different sections. So that, that really drew me to uh, Django. And, and so I was the tech lead at that time and I was sort of looking, how can we take, how can we stop using our internal CMS, which was my pride and joy, and start using Python and Django. Um, so, yeah, a, a major, a, throughout those years, I was developing all these CMS sites before Django. I, I developed a real appreciation for different types of content that can come along. And, and, I, came, and I, I learnt over time that there's really two ends of the spectrum of, of content that are sort of uh, sort of described here. You've, you've got this hierarchical tree, um, so you can imagine a, a, a real sort of content heavy site with thousands of pages on it. You know, you, you've seen them before, a website with a, a primary navigation section and you, you click on one of those and it's got secondary navigation down the left hand side and for really big crazy content sites you might click on one of those and there's tertiary levels of nav navigation. So. Uh, layers and layers of navigation managing thousands of pages of sites. So you've got that real sort of tree structure there versus on the other end of the scale, um, just straight lists, right? So things like a blog app where you list all these blog posts, um, all sorts of things like that, like products in a shop, um, e events, things like that. And so all, all websites generally fall within somewhere in the middle of the, those, that spectrum, right? And some systems do the tree thing really good. Some systems do the, the list type data really good. But it, it, it's hard to do them all in a holistic way. Um, which our, our, our own internal CMS did quite well, so we'd evolved that over years. And so how, how could we do that in Django is what we were asking ourselves. And just a reminder that this critique of the, the Django ecosystem, it's six or seven years old we're, we're going back to, so th things might have changed quite a bit since then, and they, they certainly have with Mezzanine. But we looked at a couple of projects. Um, one was called Pinax, which was really ahead of its time. And, it, and Pinax... Um, it's very similar conceptually to Mezzanine in that Django is a web development framework. It's comprehensive. It's a, it's, it's a monolithic framework, right? It gives you every tool you're going to need to build a website, but it does not give you a website at all. Um, you still have to build all that from scratch. And so what Pinax was trying to do was provide all the different applications, the blogging and the photos and um, the user profiles and following other users on a website. Um, and, and give you all those features in a holistic way, but they really sort of developed that from the bottom up where you had all these apps, but you were responsible for like trying to glue them together in a holistic way. So that worked well and it, it was really cool, um, but it didn't have this notion of content hierarchy, the real, the real tree side of things. It was real sort of this list uh, type thing. Um, the other project we looked at back then was a thing called Django Page CMS, which really was the, the tree. It's, you know, here's your navigational structure of a website and how you can manage that. Um, but it was early days. It was kind of brittle. It really needed heavy caching, which didn't really suit our taste. Like, we kind of saw that as a band-aid for performance. And um, it introduced some concepts that weren't specific to Django, you had to learn its own API of doing things, and that's a point that I'm going to talk about quite a bit today in terms of one of the characteristics of Mezzanine. It's, it's just Django. You, you use normal Django concepts for building your me Mezzanine website. Um, so we combined those two projects, and we had private forks of them, and we, we hacked them up, and we changed them for each different project, and that worked well. But we, we had a really big problem in that um, in terms of a, a beautiful enterprise, uh, enterprise CMS, 
Um, we were still providing just the simple Django admin for these really expensive uh, big name clients and it wasn't up to scratch and every single project we did was different. So we didn't have a way of giving the, the owners of these websites who were paying us lots and lots of money a really beautiful holistic CMS interface for managing all the data between these different uh, types of things. Um, so at the time, the, the, the manager, he said, um, you know, Django's really cool and it's, it's cutting edge and it's up there in terms of the web technology, but it's not really cutting it um, in terms of what our clients are expecting. So maybe we'll, we might start using WordPress for some smaller sites and things like that. Um, and, you know, that, that's a, that was a fair call at the time, you know, like trying to do the best thing for the customer and things like that. But I was the tech lead and I, I, I basically just said, we're not going to do that. that. That'd be a really step backwards going back to PHP and hacking WordPress plugins and things like that. Um, and and I, I just said no. I said, look, I'm going to put on my, my programming hat. I'm going to go away for a, a weekend and I'll, I'll come up with something built with Django that's like WordPress and it's consistent and it looks good and it allows us to um, bring all these different types of content together in a really holistic way, not just this hodgepodge of, of different applications. Um, so I knocked that out in a weekend. It was just so basic, like it was very crude, but it was a great starting point. And um, I sort of developed that over the next uh, month or so for a couple of different projects we were working on and then released it as open source. And um, so Mezzanine was born and I've just put that short URL there because the underlying one is, is, is really long and that's, that's case sensitive as well, by the way. But um, that, that points to the original commit um, from five years ago or so of when I first open sourced Mezzanine. And I was talking to uh, Ken, Ken Bolton, who's this superstar in the Mezzanine community, he really helps out with the support and everything like that. And I, I can't remember how it came up, but we were looking at that original commit for five years ago, and it was hilarious, right? Because you, you can skim read this thing in, in five minutes or so, there's not much to it. And, but if you wanted to give someone a, a quick overview of the architecture of Mezzanine today, um, it, it maps that commit from, from five years ago, and it, it's, it's like there's a hundred times more code around that, but the structure has held true over those five years. And, and the project's grown to like over 200 uh, contributors and thousands of mailing list subscribers and followers on GitHub and uh, hundreds, if not, uh, we only know about a few hundred, but thousands of sites potentially. I mean, I just met people here at, at the conference who, oh, we've built mezzanine sites, I didn't even know about them. Um, and I, I said to Ken, I said, you know, either we're really stubborn or the, the design works really well because it, it, it's held true for five years. And it's, the truth is probably it's a, a little bit of both. Um, so that's the background of why we built Mezzanine. We were there in the Django space very early on. We really wanted to use Python. We really wanted to use Django. We, we were accustomed to providing really slick CMS projects to, to really high paying customers. And we couldn't do it with Django without something like Mezzanine. And it, 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 it solved that problem back then and, and it, it still solves that problem today. It, it's very valid. Um, so next up, I'm gonna talk a bit about the sort of characteristics that define the way Mezzanine works and the design of it. And it, it, it's a really sort of good perspective on distinguishing it from other projects in the, in the same space, uh, CMS and e-commerce projects, particularly in the Django space. Um, so I follow this guy on Twitter, Benjamin Black, um, and I think he's a really switched on guy, and uh, I think he was involved in the original sort of Amazon EC2 architecture. So he's on this whole other level in terms of right, like web development versus scaling these gigantic systems. But he made this quote on Twitter and it really sort of resonated with me and um, especially around mezzanine and the user experience of it and the way, the way it's implemented. And he says, you make different things if you focus on the constraints of what you're, what you're providing and, and what are the lines that are drawn and how far are you gonna go with that um, versus looking at the requirements, which is the stock standard way you approach building these things, right? You get a list of requirements, you sit there, you build them. Um, and, and I think this is a really highly applicable 
uh, idea, especially in the, the user experience of a CMS. Um, and so, and, and just leading into that, th there's a really good question. Uh, you know, who is the architect of a CMS experience? Is it, is it us, the programmers, who are implementing a, a Django project? Um, is the CMS powerful enough and, and, and enterprise enough for a, a, a well-trained, non-technical user to go into the CMS and, and create the architecture themselves? Um, and I think, you know, that, 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 that latter case where, you know, you have some CMS projects where they provide drag and drop blocks and you can develop your own content types within the CMS yourself and you can configure those and there's a steep learning curve for the non-technical user, but they're very empowering, right? Um, but you can lead to sites that are just a, a, a big mess, right? They're not especially experts in, in building websites. So, um, yeah, you, you, you can get a bit of a mess and, and there's a lot of training involved in the CMS project. I personally think that a, a, a person who's new to a, a CMS project as, as, a, as a manager of content should be able to log into that CMS and intuitively be able to manage the content without thinking about it. Um, and so on, on the other end of the scale we have the developer who works closely with a, their customer that they're building the CMS website project for and they can ex work out exactly what the content requirements are for that website and the developer can craft the CMS experience to map that, that the re content requirements for the website precisely and what you get is a, a perfectly tuned CMS that constrains the content manager from doing anything silly and and, and from really disrupting the do design and, and the structure of the website itself. And coming back to Mezzanine's roots in a, in a digital agency where branding and, and, and design is of the utmost importance, we had to build these, these projects that did not let users uh, corrupt that design, for, for lack of a better term. Um, so Mezzanine is all about the constraints. It's, there are CMS projects out there that empower you to do so much and Mezzanine isn't trying to do that. It's, it's, it's to empower the developer to constrain uh, the things that the CMS manager can do to, to keep a beautifully uh, looking site intact. Um, the next characteristic I want to talk about is something that Mezzanine's constantly striving for and um, that's simplicity. Um, and so how do we do that? Um, and, and the key is uh, we, we stick to straight Django concepts, right? There are projects in the Django space that um, they're doing it as a content management, they're doing e-commerce, and you have to sit there and again, you, you have to be trained up on how to build content in these systems. Um, they have their own APIs, they have their own documentation for doing things like that. And um, Mezzanine tries very hard to just present straight Django concepts. So in Django you have, uh, you have these ORM classes that map to um, SQL database tables. You have a templating language for displaying your templates. You have these view functions that glue those two things together. And when you're working with Mezzanine, you are just working with these concepts. You don't have to go and learn anything else, any other sort of complicated plugin architecture or anything like that. And so for the, for the savvy Django developer, Mezzanine is, is very natural. It's very quick to pick up. Um, you create a, a, a Django model that might be a, a blog post, for example. Um, you define what the fields of that, that are in your, your model class. Um, you create a view function, you create a template, and this is just how you would do it in a normal Django project without Mezzanine. It's just that Mezzanine gives you a whole sort of um, kitchen sink of utilities to sort of um, expedite that process. So Mezzanine, these, these abstract constraint, these abstract uh, characteristics that define it and distinguish it, I believe, against other projects in the space, it's the constraints. It's heavily focused on the constraints, um, the simplicity, and it is really just Django. I missed a point back there, but um, nine out of ten question, questions that come up on the Mezzanine mailing list 
They're not mezzanine specific, they're Django questions. And this is a problem for us, right? Because we don't want to duplicate the fantastic Django documentation. Our community is a, a tiny portion of the whole Django community where there's tens of thousands of mailing list subscribers, right? So unfortunately we say, I'll just go and look at the Django documentation. Here are the concepts you need to learn. And we have this big flashing block at the top of the mezzanine documentation. All of this documentation assumes that you know not Django. If the, the concepts in it aren't going to make sense if you don't know Django. So this is really a, a, a project to um, expedite developing Django sites, and you need to know Django. Um, so next up, I want to talk about the the implementation, how we actually take Django. And this is the most technical part. So if you don't know Django, you should be able to um, hang in there because it, it's it's not too deep. Um, so I'll talk about how we actually model the content and how we sort of come up with the admin interface, which is really an interesting topic. Um, so mezzanine is it's Lego, right? We have all these tiny little um, abstract models that you can bring together and yay, Python multiple inheritance, right? It's great. You can, we, you, we use this really uh, sort of classic object-oriented approach of here, here's a little class that does this, here's a little class that does this, here's a little class that does this. Bring two of those together if you want, bring three of those together if you want, and, cr and, and craft your types of content using that. Um, now, you might not actually be exposed to all, all these little building blocks because we come up with some main ones that, that leverage all those, and these are the ones that you generally want to deal with. And, they, and there's, there's two main building blocks that I'll, I'll talk about, and these two main building blocks, they map back directly to that uh, diagram I had before of the, the tree interface versus with, with hierarchical data versus the list interface, where you, which is a bit more simplistic. Um, so for that list interface, we, we have this model called displayable. And it, it, it's, it's simply data, right? It doesn't have any special uh, actual website features, uh, which we're talking about in a sec for something else. But um, displayable, it just gives you search integration. It gives you URL creation for the, the, the model you're creating, publishing um, dates, things like that, um, ownership by other users, all these features that, that just form the baseline of, okay, I want to create an event type of thing. I want to create a blog post type of thing. I want to create a, a product, right? These are all things that have a URL and they have a title and they might have some, some dates when you want to publish them and things like that. Um, so that's displayable, it's quite simple. A lot of people never actually touch it. Um, back to the tree, and, and this, we, we have the other type, which is the page model. And this is, uh, you know, I mentioned before that there's no special mezzanine API, and I, I told a little white lie. This is, this is as much of an API as we have, is this page model subclassing it. And this is the, the crux of dealing with mezzanine and, and, and taking mezzanine and really personalizing it and, and building a CMS experience for your customer. You simply take uh, this, this page model from within mezzanine and you subclass it. And on your, and these are Django models and you, I've put pass against each of these because I didn't want to fill it up too much, but you define the attributes of um, what each of these types of content are. Um, this rich text page, for example, I mean, these are actually examples that come out of the box with mezzanine, but the rich text page, it just defines a big WYSIWYG field, right? Um, the form page is, uh, and, and so that's a very simplistic example of a content type in mezzanine. And because this is all just Django models and Django view functions and Django templates, right, the sky is the limit. You can, Django is so powerful, you can take all these Django concepts and you can absolutely go berserk with the types of mezzanine pages you're creating. The rich text page, it, it's dumb. It's got a title, it's got a WYSIWYG editor. Um, the, the form page, it's absolutely advanced. It, um, you actually go into the admin interface and you create the form and you specify, um, you can actually drag and drop the different field types that are going to be on the form. So I can create an email address field, uh, what's your favorite color field, and I can put in the options for red, green, blue, and I can have a default value for that. I can specify the contents of an email that someone will receive when they, they fill out this form. 
I can then in the Django, uh, sorry, the mezzanine admin interface, I can, I can extract the data from everything that's submitted via these forms into CSV files. I can drill down on the individual fields that I've added to it. And this is all non-technical, right? The, the, the CMS manager can come in there and, and do this and build something simply like a, a contact form versus um, an elaborate competition that they're going to draw prizes for and things like that. Um, and that's all built using straight Django concepts. We extend the admin, which is actually Django admin. We, we create our own view functions for that. Um, and it's, re it's a really advanced content type. So the, the spectrum from simple to complex is, is huge in terms of these different content types that you can create. So you create these models, and that defines what a, a content type is going to look like. Um, you then create a corresponding uh, HTML template that then knows how to deal with an instance of one of these models. And you, ca you can construct how that's going to look. And that's actually it. That's how you create your, 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 um, your, your mezzanine site and all the different types of content that you uh, pr provide to um, your customer. And, and a special bonus with mezzanine, and this is something I think a, a lot of other projects in the space struggle with, is and I'll talk about this a lot more in a moment, but um, there's a huge ecosystem of Django applications out there that have nothing to do with Mezzanine, and they, they implement their templates and their view functions and things like that. You can point these pages directly to Django applications in a Mezzanine slash Django project. So the, the sky is the limit, right? Mezzanine can just be your starting point, and you can go away and collect all the different utilities and, 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 and Django apps you, you need in the, in the third-party ecosystem, bring them in and, and, and hook them up to these different pages. And this is, a, this is a problem that we've applied copious amounts of effort into solving. Um, because it's like, how do I, inter like Mezzanine, it's a, it's a whole Django project. How do I in integrate the Django ecosystem into that? And we, we do that really well. Um, and so, yeah, just, I mean, you can see here, this is an example, I showed this before, but this is one, one screen within the, uh, the, the Mezzanine admin interface. And you can see this is sort of, uh, hopefully looks like a tree interface, right? And you can see the, the, the pages, and you can see that, that drop down at the bottom there, and off, off each page in the, in the tree, you, that you can see the list of those content types coming straight out there. So you, you just develop these models, set up the templates, and it's all there. And I don't have another screenshot, but if you were to add one of these, it'll go straight through into the editing interface for that particular type of content. Publish it, it's done. It's a very simplistic workflow, and the savvy Django developer can pick this up very quickly without learning mezzanine-specific concepts. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how we implement the content. Uh, next up, I, I, I will talk about the, the actual interface a, a bit. And this is a big topic. Um, there's, there's, again, there's CMS projects in the Django space. There's e-commerce projects in the Django space. I've worked for companies, uh, and they make a mistake. And I, I've worked for companies where I've had to fight for them to not make this mistake as well. And so again, this assumes a bit of Django knowledge. But coming back to the Django admin, it, it's great out of the box with Django. It gives you this CRUD interface. It's very fast to get that up and running quickly. But a lot of people say it, it's too simplistic. It was designed in uh, 2005 or, or something. It, it looks a kind of Spartan, which is a fair comment. And it, it doesn't really match a CMS experience, right? It, it's just CRUD. It's just lists of data, add, edit, delete. And I, I feel it's, 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 a, it's a form of laziness, right, to sit there and say, and the problem I'm talking about to sit there and say, we don't want to use Django Admin for, for this project. We're going to create our own management interface for a CMS or an e-commerce store or whatever. And that's fine, right? It's really cool. It's fun to do something new. It's fun to build something from scratch. Um, it's, it's good if you can map your administrative interface directly to the problem you're solving. But I, I think it's a big mistake because um, if you've worked with Django Admin long enough, I, I can testify that you can make it do whatever it is you need it to do. You can completely reskin it, right? This looks nothing like, if you've seen Django Admin before, this looks nothing like it. Uh, we have our own custom navigation section across here that, um, and, and 
But this is still Django admin underneath, and all of the third-party ecosystem of Django applications that all provide their own integration with Django admin, if we go off and create our own CMS interface or our own e-commerce e interface, you, you've completely disrespected the developer who's building these sites because they can no longer leverage all the, these third-party applications that um, hook into the administrative interface. You've completely disrespected your customer. You've now provided them with two management interfaces. Here's our cool, slick custom interface for doing the, the specific stuff that we want you to do. And for all the other stuff that we didn't have time to integrate into our home, homegrown admin UI, um, you have to go and log into the, the Django admin, the Spartan looking Django admin to do stuff there. And I mean, it's my personal opinion, and this is a hot topic, but it's, it's very wrong. And so Mezzanine really strives to leverage the Django admin. We make it look beautiful. Um, we, there's this project called Grappelli. If you're in the Django admin space, you, you would have heard of it. It's, a, um, it's just a nice skin, right? And we forked that way back at the start, four or five years ago. And we, we took out parts we didn't need, and we've integrated it tightly with Mezzanine. This doesn't look too much like uh, Grappelli anymore, apart from the, the, the colors and things like that. So we make a beautiful. Django admin. We take it well beyond a CRUD interface, and this is all very possible if you know all the, the documented hooks and the undocumented hacks, and you, 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 you're persistent with doing that. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it, Mezzanine makes a very distinct choice in all these trade offs of how to provide the management UI, and I think we, we really make the right one there. Um, so that's how Django, uh, that's how Mezzanine's implemented in terms of the content models, how you build your content, how we provide the administrative UI. Uh, next up, I want to talk about a, a concept in Mezzanine, which is batteries included. Um, so this is a subjective thing, right? Um, you know, the whole Unix philosophy, and particularly with like with Node.js, I don't know if you've delved into that uh, ecosystem much, but they have a gazillion little, like they, uh, they, they brag about the number of packages in their, 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 um, their PyP equivalent, I think it's called NPM. And, um, but most of these packages are like, here's a function to reverse a string, right? Like lots of little tools. And some people prefer, it, pre pre prefer this model, right? Unix philosophy, lots of little tools that do one tiny thing really well. Python, the standard library, batteries included. Django, monolithic framework, batteries included. All of the, the features that you, you, you need to uh, develop a website. And there's a beauty of this batteries included philosophy. You, 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 you avoid all the friction of having to bring all these dependencies together. And, work, and the hardest part in software development is obviously communicating with other human beings, right? And you, you avoid all, all this friction in, in, in bringing together different dependencies and getting them to work right. Whereas with Python, you get this beautiful standard library. It all works together nicely. Same with Django, right? They're ORM, they're templating, everything. They, they, they control the whole ecosystem. They control the whole framework around that so they can make that work nicely. We do that with Mezzanine as well. We provide, we have sort of this arbitrary point of, um, if 75% of content-ish slash B2C consumer websites need this feature, and we can implement one that's good enough in a simple enough way, um, we will include it in Mezzanine. And so we, we have this real batteries in included philosophy. And, um, and another thing, with, with Python and, and Django and uh, Rails and Java and things like that, right? Back in the day, at least in my background, we came from... Web development was, you know, it's like uh, um, this this fantasy land, right, where everything was so simplistic. I, I, I write a bunch of PHP scripts, I FTP them up to a server, and it's done. And, and the URLs map directly to the PHP scripts, and it, it's 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 so crude and simplistic. But that it's got this charm to it. And sometimes I kind of I miss those days, right? Deploying Python and Django, it's it, it, it's really hard, right? It's so fun to build the sites and the, the, the technology is so elegant and powerful, but to deploy these things, there, there's so many components involved and so many things can go wrong. Same with rails and things like that. And the, the sort of double-edged sword with mezzanine is that 
new guys come along from PHP or whatever, and they're like, oh, I want to learn Python, that's cool. I want to learn Django, that's cool. Oh, I've still got to learn this and build my site, right? They see Mezzanine, that in one command, you install Mezzanine, and your site is there with all these features already. And so we get a lot of people come along who've never touched Python, never touched Django. And so Mezzanine recognizes this, and, and we strive to empower the non-Python developer to get up and running in Python development very quickly. Um, and so batteries included is something that tries to solve that. We, we don't want them to have to go and source all these different third-party libraries. We want to provide a holistic thing that they can just use. Um, so I'll talk about some of these uh, batteries we, we've got. Um, Django provides this uh, generic content types library that basically allows you to glue all sorts of different models to other models in this abstract, abstract way. So we, we leverage that. We have this package, uh, mezzanine generic, and um, it gives you things like keywords that you can plug into any model, um, ratings, so you might have a blog post and users can rate it and things like that. Um, threaded comments, Django provides this fairly simplistic comments app, which they're actually going to get rid of, which is really unfortunate. Um, we extend that and we make a nice threaded com uh, comment discussion system, and we actually can hook those ratings into the threaded comments. So all of those can be plugged into anything else in a really nice way, and we, we leverage those throughout the different features of Mezzanine. Um, Django has this uh, highly looked down upon global settings object that's, uh, it's got some design problems and we don't try and fix that. We, we basically take that bad thing and we just roll with it and make it 100 times worse. Um, but we, we have, there's Django conf settings, we have mezzanine conf settings and all of the Django settings, the no way you'd normally access those, you can access those via mezzanine conf settings but you can also register these editable settings that are accessed in the exact same API via mezzanine conf settings. And the difference with those is you, default, you give them a data type, a default value, whether it's editable. And for the ones that are editable, we actually expose the settings interface in the, the mezzanine admin. So you can go in and put, um, you know, what are, uh, what's the title of the site? Um, what are these uh, authentication keys for connecting to some service? So all those types of different things. And Django slash mezzanine applications, the third party apps, the ones that are in mezzanine itself, they can all register their own settings. And so we've got this little settings framework built on top of the bad Django comp settings. Um, we have our own integrated search. There's a, if you're in the Django space, there's a cool project, Haystack. Um, it, it's for, for Django and it abstracts away Elastic, ter Elastic Search, which is great technology. I use that on some other stuff. Um, Solar and all these powerful sort of uh, Java enterprise search uh, APIs. Um, but in my experience, for the types of sites that uh, Mezzanine's aim towards, you know, your basic e-commerce, anywhere from 10 to 1,000 pages, um, a, a simple SQL search where we provide some nice features on top of that, like search operators must include this exact term and or this phrase or things like that. Um, and that hooks into all those sort of building blocks that I was talking about before. So if you follow those mezzanine building blocks, you, you get search straight out of the box. Um, we provide all the front end user account registration and things like that so you can develop, um, uh, you can create profiles. So I want to capture the birthday and the country and um, the, the age and favorite movie of all my front end website users, right? And you can develop features around your website that require a user to be authenticated. Um, so all, all the stuff around that, lost password, um, managing those users, expiring accounts, things like that. Um, Multi-tenancy is a really hard problem in the Django space. Django provides this sites framework where you can sort of store the data for a bunch of different sites in one database. Um, but you still kind of need to deploy uh, separate instances of each site. So Mezzanine, uh, Mezzanine uses this, some people call it a hack in the Django space, but we actually scaled it to one of the largest traffic systems in Australia that's published 200 websites, um, where we allow a single deployed instance to host the content for hundreds of different sites. So we handle that multi-tenancy problem as well. Image thumbnailing is just a bog standard feature of um, 
CMSs, you know, we can resize images on the fly, things like that. Um, we provide a really comprehensive caching um, set of tools. The, the background of Mezzanine is these simplistic content sites, so not complicated web applications. Lots of content, thousands of pages that are, are fairly quite static, right? But they're still being read from a database. And we're dealing in, we're dealing in Australia with like these really um, high traffic sites, big, big customers. And so we use this uh, caching technique called, in Django called two-phase rendering where, t you know, typically you'll build a, a website and some part, you'll, you'll profile the bottlenecks and some part will be slow and um, so you start wrapping caching around that. We actually do the opposite, right? We, we make the assumption that 99% of the site, if not 100, um, is cacheable. So we cache the entire site using memcached or whatever. And we actually provide these tiny little tags that you can then go into the relevant sections and you can say, I don't want to cache this part. So a, a, a case of that might be you just show the, the user's username at the, top of, um, at the top of every site, right? Whole thing will be cached. You wrap that one little bit um, in these tags and that will never get cached. Um, so that's really powerful and saves you a lot of time when you're dealing with simplistic content heavy sites that are going to get high amounts of traffic. Um, we also use this technique called mint caching, which basically, you know, you have this problem where if a, a piece of content that expires in the cache and a gazillion people hit that at once, they're all going to hit the database. So this mint caching technique means that there is always a value in the cache for a particular site. And when that gets invalidated, it doesn't remove it from cache. It just sends off a signal that says, we need to update this in the cache. And then that happens, and, and everyone's always getting a, a, a cache version, but it does get updated, which is really cool. Um, the actual front end, again, some of these CMS projects, and this is something that really draws people to mezzanine is, and you saw the screenshot before of the default site, we provide all, we provide a whole site out of the box. You start a new mezzanine project, the site's done, right? And some people, they simply want a site, they, they don't care about the design, they don't care about the features, they just want the default features that mezzanine provides, they're done in five minutes. And we provide like some bootstrap CSS framework and you don't have to use any of that. You can throw it all out. Some people don't like that and that's cool. Thanks to Django, thanks to its templating, you can override all that and, and get rid of it. Plus uh, live editing. So we have this really simple way of integrating into your templates and this isn't mezzanine specific. It doesn't have to wrap around mezzanine content. It's, it can wrap around just straight Django models where you, you wrap bits of content in, in these tags and then an authenticated CMS user, they can actually browse the site and they'll have placeholders all throughout the actual site itself saying you can edit this bit, edit this title, edit this piece of content here and directly in line on the actual website itself. So that's really powerful. Um, then coming back to this problem of new developers coming from PHP background, things like that, again, I'll say it, like Django is fantastic in the Python space in general, but the deployment is a nightmare. And there's lots of tools that are trying to ease this. There's a um, tool called Fab Fabric, which basically allows you to automate a, a whole bunch of SSH commands remotely. And so we actually provide these Fabric files that um, it allows you to develop your mezzanine project locally and you run a few commands and uh, if you have a, a, a Linux server, you've just got it from Linode or DigitalOcean or something like that, default Linux server, you just put in the, the SSH credentials and things like that into your, your mezzanine settings, one command, it will provision all the software on uh, that server and it's very opinionated, right? It will use Postgres, Nginx, all, all these things that I like um, and I, I know work well. There's a lot of choices there but it makes those for you. And you can go from, from one command to developing locally to production ready deployed site with all the caching and Postgres tuned and things like that. So we really try and we, it's, it's, a, it's a bad thing as well. We, we shield newcomers from all those complexities and sometimes on the main list I'll be like, okay, well you've hit a problem with this, unfortunately you're going to have to dive in and, and try and learn about all the underlying concepts. But if it works, which it usually does, you, you can deploy these things really easily, which is typically quite hard in the, in the Django space. 
so those are the batteries included, uh, apart from the, that original sort of main page API and developing your site structure around that, all these little utilities that aren't specific to developing the structure of the site. Um, so that's the batteries included. Uh, but wait, there's also extra batteries. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's sort of developed around the, the mezzanine ecosystem over the last five years. And, um, I'll just quickly talk about those. So these first two, I've really, they're, they're projects of mine, I really championed them. Um, cartridge is one, I started at about the same time of mezzanine and these things, two, these two thing, projects sort of developed uh, along with each other and, it's, and cartridge was gonna be this standalone thing and then it be, and, and as mezzanine really developed a nice API with the page model and things like that we t that we looked at before, it became quite obvious that, that cartridge is something that would really leverage mezzanine and just become another one of these page types like the form and the rich text page I, I was showing before. I mean, that form example was really advanced in terms of a, a content type in mezzanine. This one is crazy advanced in terms of the features it provides and, and the beauty of it is it's just another mezzanine page type that then extends out into like a standard Django app with all its own models and, and views and templates. And it's, it's got uh, products and product variations, the sizes, colors, things like that. Um, shopping cart, obviously, discount codes, promotional codes, things like that. Um, stock control, you know, I've only got five of this left on the site, so only five people can, can buy it. Uh, all, all the orders and the user being able to manage their orders and report it, sales reporting on that. And, and again, it's, it's all just straight Django concepts that hook straight into Mezzanine. There's no special Mezzanine API that had to be leveraged in order to, to put that together. Um, Drum is not really a forum, but for, forum was the best uh, sort of way you could come up with describing it. Um, I love Hacker News and, and Reddit. They're like the the Roman Colosseum of the tech age. You go there and watch people duke it out and things like that, and it's a bit of entertainment. But I love this model of uh, um, crowdsource content and voting up links and voting up comments and things like that. And I, I was thinking about it one time and I thought, um, just going back to those, uh, that, those batteries, um, there's a lot here that goes beyond just like a, a typical content site. There's, there's a lot of, this is a real big toolkit that Mezzanine provides for building all sorts of different web applications. So I thought, how hard would it be to build a Hacker News Reddit clone using just those tools in Mezzanine, the, the threaded comments, the, the ratings and extending those? And I, I wrote this big blog post about that. So that's, that's, that's a really interesting read if, 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 if you like that. Uh, and it was very little code um, to take all the mezzanine bits and make uh, a Hacker News clone with that. Um, again, and, and last point, WordPress, um, one of its biggest selling points, there's 50 gazillion million themes out there, right? People come to mezzanine and they're like, hey guys, where's the themes? We, we need to make some nice themes for this. So uh, Josh Cartmill, another huge superstar in the mezzanine community, um, He's come along and developed all these themes on the, the Meza theme website. And shout out to Daniel Greenfield, aka Pi Danny. He's kindly set up a, a, a mezzanine section on djangopackages.com. And there, there's about 70 different plugins that people have uh, put together around that. So, in conclusion, mezzanine, it's very simple, very simple. It's opinionated, it makes a lot of choices for you, a whole bunch of batteries included. But at the end of the day, you come along and you're just doing a Django project. It's really geared towards uh, Django. And we must be doing something right because these are all these beautiful websites that, that people have developed using Mezzanine. There's, that's just a small subset. In fact, I picked the top ones that look good. But um, yeah, there's, there's, there's tons of stuff going on. So, uh, and that's it. Thank you very much for um, listening to me rant on about my, my pride and joy. Okay, thank, uh, thanks Steve for the excellent talk and the excellent job of Mezzanine. I'm sorry, but uh, we just ran out of time, so we, I think we really don't have time to take questions right now, but uh, Steve will still be here for quite some time this afternoon at least, so if you have any questions or you just want to line in the queue to take pictures with him, please find him at the, here. Thank you.